Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I have another little project. I did a video pretty far back where I tried to upgrade an HP server by installing a Xeon processor and that didn't work. Uh, the video is in my video thingy way back. Right now I actually got a motherboard that I think will work because I did a search on it on Google and it seems that people has had this working. This is a Gigabyte GAP35C DS3R and people says on the internet that this motherboard will work. And the idea is that you take a motherboard like this and you take out the dual core that is in here and you remove the tabs and you put a piece of tape on the Xeon processor and you put that one in and it should run a lot faster. Let's go to the table and see if I can get this up and running. Okay, here is a nice close up of the motherboard and as you can see right here, it's the GAP35C DS3R and the brand is Gigabyte. Plug some cables into that. And first, I have a power supply sitting right over here. This is going to be kind of a sports wagon setup. We have a power supply and we have a cooler right there. Right now, this is just a dual call 8400 that is in here. And I just want to show to start with that, that it works. So I'm going to plug some power into that. And this is the old power system where you have kind of two plugs that you have to extend this like that. And it goes down there. Now we have power on that. And it has a second power that goes in here as far as I know. That has something to do with powering the, the processor. And we have a we have a CPU cooler here. Um, it should screw down into some kind of a cabinet, but well, I'm just gonna place it on top, put it down here, and plug that in. This motherboard does not have a graphics card, so I have a, I have a graphics card here, a NVIDIA Quattro or something. Put that in. Special, plug in the cable here, and that goes in that one. And there is already power on this one. So we need a mouse and keyboard, have those here. Yeah. So now I should be able to power this on. And to power on a motherboard like this without a switch, there is two connections here on the motherboard that I need to, to short circuit or to connect on the red here. The power supply is running over here. And it's booting. And the system boots. We have something on it, which is important just to make sure that it works before we started breaking it. I haven't connected a hard drive right now. I don't feel that it's important until um, I have a working processor in it, a CN processor. I have a CN processor here, and this is an E5420, uh, and it's a 2.5 gigahertz quad core Intel CN processor. And the little trick that you have to do is you, well, you have there is two pins here beneath it that has to be switched around and you go on eBay or Amazon or I'll leave a, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can get these on Amazon and you put on this little piece of tape and that switches those two little dots around. I don't know if I can get really close to this, seems I can. You can kind of see that there is a lot of holes. It's, it's a little piece of tape that you put on here. Most of these are holes and then the two ones in the middle there, where the light is blinding us, they are switched around. And you put this processor in, but you have to modify the motherboard just a little bit to make it fit there. 
I have a better CN processor as well. This is the X5450 and this is a 3 gigahertz quad core. But I haven't put any tape on that yet. So you don't really break the processor by doing this. But well, if I get the other one working, I'll try out this one next. So I remove the heat sink here, unplug it. And I have, I have turned off the power supply. I'm just gonna disconnect it as well. And we'll take out the processor. Yeah, I kind of made a mess with the heatsink compound. The socket has these two tabs, one up here and one down here. And they have to be removed because we need the processor to go in in another way. Then, and this little triangle up here where pin one is, that is important. But right now I'll remove those two small thingies and I'm just gonna be using a Stanley knife, exacto knife or what you call this and do this really quick. Okay, after a little mingling around with the knife down here, I have removed the little pin up here and I have cut away some of the pin down here. And now I should be able to put in the Xeon CPU there. And this little CPU, it has to turn in a specific way. It has this little triangle right there on it. And that little triangle has to hit this little triangle up here, which is also represented, or oh, you can see that, that's just outside of framing, up here on this socket holding, there's a little triangle right there on the metal. So the CPU goes in like this. So that little corner goes up here, up to this little corner up here. And if it, if this should just let out all the blue smoke, you won't be seeing this video. There we are, it's in there. And I'll put the heat sink back on. Might give it another dab, some heat sink compound. I don't know if I remember to, to do this again. So might just give it a little bit like that, just a tiny little bit. And I'll take the bits off that is already there. There we are. Just remove that. Just gonna put that down there. And just mush it down on top of the CPU. It won't have a really good connection, it just it just needed to stay there for, for a little bit of testing. Like that. Cool. So I haven't got the faintest idea what will happen, so if everything blows up, well, great video. Okay, it's on. And we Yeah! We have it's alive! Aha! <laughs> See if it sees the processor anywhere. Well, it's absolutely alive. So I think I have to install some kind of a windows on this before I can really get some measurements of this. So I'll go get a disc and install a disc over here and put Windows 7 on it for now. I put in a little hard drive here, it's a slow one from an old laptop and over here I installed Windows 7 and as you can see it now has 4 CPUs, it did not have that before and if we go over here and zoom in on this, oh, on this, there, we can now see that it's running a CN processor, 2.5 gigahertz. That's sweet, pretty cool, right? Uh, it's slow as hell right now. I think it has problems with the two gigs of RAM. It's, it's not enjoying that at all. If we see the graph here, we can see that it's using all the RAM. I'm gonna try and shut it off again and put in some more RAM and see if, if that helps my performance because it's very slow. I think I found why it's so slow. As you can see here, the I don't think I can point, yeah. The CPU 
cooler is sitting on top of these caps. I don't think it's actually touching the processor. So that's probably why it's slow. When the processor is not cool enough, it will slow down to save the processor. So I'm gonna see if I can turn the, the heatsink around. It's very clear that the CPU and the cooler has not have a very good contact. So I'm gonna try and put it in in a different angle and see if that will uh, I need to I need to remove that cable zip tie first. Okay, I turned it around and this looks a lot better. Now it's actually mushing out all the the heat sink compound. I was wondering why the the CPU fan was making such a noise. But I think it's a lot better now, so we're gonna turn it on. I added two blocks more of RAM, so these two are now two gigabytes and these are one gigabyte. And let's turn this on and see if we're good to go. Okay, now I got it running again. And well, it's so fast in this boot thing that I don't really get to see if it sees all the RAM and stuff. So I have to wait until it's inside of Windows again. Oh, oh, I have to remove the USB stick as well. I have been installing things. I uh, found that it's rather busy not even doing anything, which is a bit weird. I ran the Microsoft test where you inside of the Windows 7 can see how fast your machine is. You can just see the result. The processor gets a 7.1 and the memory also 7.1 and the graphics card is really drawing it down that's only 3.5 and we only get the lowest number so that's the what microsoft says and it still says here that we are running a cm cpu the e5420 which is a 2.5 gigahertz processor cool so i installed this performance test this one performance test 8.0 just in evaluation mode. So we're gonna be running that. We're just gonna run all the CPU stuff because all the other stuff is not special. So I'm gonna run that, that will take a little bit and bring up the processor to 100%. And you might be able to hear the fan speed as well going up now that it's actually heating up the processor and it has to run more. I get a number of about 3000 overall performance and I did check that here is what the performance test says that the CPU should do and here it says 3540 um, and I get 3000 and I think it might be because the computer is doing something else over here it's 24% busy not really doing anything um, maybe it's downloading updates in the background, I'm not entirely sure. Never mind that, it's still quite a performance improvement compared to the CPU that I got in this motherboard when I, I received it. That was a E6600 2.4 GHz dual core and that did just about half. 1562 this is a fair it's a double of performance compared to what was in the system board this is rather cool i've really been waiting to get this up and running and now i actually got a system board that will do the job and that's so cool please like the video now that you're at it this worked so if you have a system board like this i'll leave the the model number in the description and I'll go on to the next video where I'll try and see if I can overclock this system. Thank you very much for watching. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.